Hi guys, Guy Critic here, and this was a request by Landon Miracle. And if you'd like to request a song, album, or movie for me to review for a one-time donation, hit up my Kofi in the link tree below. So let's talk about De La Soul. Now, I think it's common knowledge that De La Soul has always been a counterculture group. Trugoy, Maceo, and Poznos, or however the hell you say his name, set themselves apart from common hip-hop archetypes from the very first time they caught the public eye in 1988. They bucked the trends and aesthetic gimmicks that so many artists were following just to fit in and stay relevant. In fact, De La Soul was one of the few crews to survive the great hardcore rebrand of the early 90s that swallowed up so many light-hearted hip-hop groups at the time. Now, of course, you could mainly place the early 90s stuff in the jazz rap category, but despite the relaxed, tuneful melodies of their songs, they were just so experimental with how they weaved samples through off-kilter jazz beats and lyrics with weird, unconventional rap flow switch-ups. Hell, they even featured two Japanese MCs on their album that they gave a solo track to at a time when no one in hip-hop could even name a Japanese rapper. Now, if you know one De La Soul song, it's probably Me, Myself, and I from their debut album. And while that song's an undeniable earworm, re-listening to their third album for this review got me to really understand just how much they were a challenge to the status quo of hip-hop with how they evolved their sounds. It's experimental, but not in a way that's in your face about it. It feels like they're not only using the jazz rap moniker, but legitimately picking up the mantle of hip-hop as the next evolution of jazz, and then pulling a Miles Davis bitches brew move to expand the sound even further. So let's kick back with the oddball chameleons of 90s hip-hop with today's request, Ego Trippin' Part 2. See, already we're getting an example of the experimental playfulness I'm talking about. There's that low-key, jazzy beat, and the sound of someone walking for the percussion is a nice little added creative touch. Just a cool, chilled-out vibe. Oh, what the hell? Ah, 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 what, what in the hell's going on? I realize Daylaw's known for experimental shit, but this is just fucking bonkers. Okay, so from what I can gather, the song's supposed to be a parody of hip-hop tropes at the time, with the intro being a joke on the loud, screaming, rah-rah hardcore rappers of the early 90s like Onyx. But okay, he's putting us in the role of being that over-the-top character, and maybe you think it's gonna be a thing where he references these different rappers while rapping as a sellout MC. Like, okay, he started out with the Onyx-like intro, and now he's referencing Jump by Criss Cross, another song with a really shouty hook. And in fact, the more you listen to the song, the more you can catch references to other song lyrics and rhyming cadences. But if you're really paying attention, the references don't, like, make a lot of direct sense for why they're referencing them. Yeah, I I've seen people say this is supposed to be a reference to Diggable Planets, but, like, they're a fellow abstract jazz rap group, so I, I wouldn't exactly consider them a typical example of mindless sellout brag rap shit. So to bring them up before saying that next lyric just doesn't make a lot of immediate sense, especially if you think the song's supposed to be calling out whack MCs of the time who just brag about how much money they've got. And in fact, uh, I don't even know if it's supposed to be focusing on rappers of the day, because they actually spend a substantial amount of time doing old school rap references. And who's the foot? I'm the foot, but who's stepping? Like, what? Are you supposed to be afoot now? I, I don't get it. And it's not like he's referencing things but adding new meaning to them or, or taking them to the next level as wordplay. A lot of the references feel like they were just kind of clumsily jammed in there. Watch the way I say it, ego trip. I changed my pitch up, smack my bitch up. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's supposed to be calling out the misogyny in hip-hop at the time. So, so that lyric must be a reference to a recent song, right? But no, that's not the case, because the line he's sampling is from an 80s song from the Ultramagnetic MCs. Change my pitch up, smack my bitch up, like a pimp. And wait a minute, when you keep listening to the line in the De La Soul song, he kind of muddles things by taking back what he said. I changed my pitch up, smack my bitch up, I never did it. Oh, so he's not smacking his bitch up? So, so he's not portraying the misogynistic rapper now? I, which is it? There's no real consistency in the song and who I'm supposed to think you are. And by the way, De La Soul never made a part one to this song. The title is actually a direct reference to the original song of the same name by the aforementioned Ultramagnetic MCs. So, okay, this can't be a diss then, right? Because they named the song after that one as a loving tribute, and the single art for it specifically looks like it's calling back to those old school hip hop block party flyers. So, he can't be saying that bragging was bad, is he? I mean, I guess not every song has to have a grand thesis about it, but this one's just so disjointed and coherent, it's hard to make heads or tails on a through line for what's actually going on in the song. Like, I want to say, they're saying that bragging in general is a bad thing, but then they reference a couple of their own brag songs. Like Potholes on My Lawn was a De La Soul song about how rappers in the industry are like potholes because they're a blight to the rap game. But in this song, which is supposed to be joking on that, you reference yourself by saying you are packing the holes in the lawn, as in taking out the MCs, making the game worse. 
And if this is supposed to be a satire, then why would your character be the character who's fixing things? W wouldn't you be exemplifying one of the potholes in the lawn? And the lyrics immediately following that are about having all the girls and shit, so I'm guessing he's still in character of that misogynistic rapper, right? I don't know, it's just overall so loose and random. It's like they wanted to get a big hit by reusing popular hip-hop catchphrases ironically as some sort of way to give the song an anti-mainstream edge to it, but without really, like, actually saying anything. At least in the Me, Myself, and I song, you see them pushing back against the general tough guy aesthetic that was a prominent part of a lot of 80s hip-hop. But with these vague, aimless lyrics, it sounds like someone got into their ear and told them to not be too specific with any actual commentary, you know what I mean? Even the music video is kind of lightweight stuff. Like, it's basically a cheesy, half-finished version of what The Roots would end up doing in their What They Do video to much greater effect. And that's not just me saying the video looks kind of low effort. That's De La Soul saying that. Apparently, they ended up not having much budget and time for the music video, so they only ended up shooting very little of the bigger concept video they were going for. And unfortunately, the limited visuals that ended up making the cut made the video look like it was specifically supposed to be a send-up of the I Get Around video by Tupac. Yeah, De La Soul got into a little hot water with the West Coast legend over the perceived diss with how this video looks. So like, instead of the video saying rappers in general in the mainstream rent their mansions and jewelry and don't have as much money as they say they do, it seems like they're saying that specifically about Tupac. And yeah, when you look at them side by side, it, it does kind of make sense. And when you're the famous person who's being talked about, especially for maybe selling out by doing an MTV pool party music video, yeah, I can see how you might take it personal. However, the end of that story is, apparently Tupac's sister got in contact with them a few years ago and told him Pac always had love for De La Soul, but just felt particularly hurt when it felt like out of nowhere he was being singled out by a group he respected. So it made him lash out in anger before thinking. And she let them know he never really hated them on any level like that. And how could you hate them? Like, come on, it's De La Soul. They named their peace-loving movement the Daisy Age. True Goy the Dove's first name is Yogurt spelled backwards. These guys wouldn't harm a fly. But I do wish they had at least a couple of fully formed barbs for the mainstream in a way that was direct, you know? And look, I know I'm supposed to be the kind of guy that automatically likes any song that's anti-mainstream, but I want the lyrics to still have some actual bite to them, damn it. Like, I get that Daylock can be a little abstract at times, but this is just too vague and all over the place as a song to come off like a diss or any kind of critique of the rap game. Although I will say, I think this lyrical sample sounds way cooler in this song than in any other. Now I'm something like a phenomenon. I'm something like a phenomenon. Like, I could have swore the LL Cool J song came out before this, but no, De La Soul was sampling that old school Melly Mel White Line song way before LL did it. Like, this is the beat I hear when I think of these lyrics. I legit thought it was the hook of the song for the longest time. And when I hear these lines, I hear the type of light parody this song could be, like with recycling phrases and putting them in an altered context, with the original song here having a social message advocating against cocaine in the 80s, and this lyric switching it up to be about how awesome the rapper is. But unfortunately, it doesn't really do that. Now people stop taking my style and for a joke, I don't sassafras, I put the foot on the ass. Sassafras? What the hell? Like, with goofy lyrics like this, it ultimately makes it seem like the real joke is just the general idea of a passive group like De La Soul doing a hardcore brag track in the first place. And maybe that would work if they would have focused on the lyrics more and the song didn't just fall apart at the end. I am the is equals is cause it's caught up when the time taught me the ropes. Uh, wh what Blue's got the muffin. Blue's got the muffin. Blue's got the muffin. What's going on? From open up a like Danny Moon when I swallow here the So give me room. I I legitimately can't tell what's happening in the song anymore. Oh yeah, and then the the screaming. Okay, D didn't think anything would be more unsettling than the screaming, but Prince Paul at the end there, calmly asking who's crying while the manic screaming occurs, definitely up the uncomfortable factor a bit there. Overall, despite them being such an iconic group, I, I gotta give this one a 2 out of 5. It's one of those things where a socially conscious rapper attempts to send up these mainstream rappers, but the guys are clearly not comfortable in their ability to mimic the style and mannerisms in a way that doesn't feel awkward and forced. The beat is okay, and it's fun and creative in similar ways to the other songs from the Balloon Mind State album, but this one in particular just feels so toothless in its delivery of what they're doing. It just never quite hits at the right pitch you hope it would. It's just an unsatisfactory listen that sounds like it's gonna flip a bunch of cliches on their heads, but things got kinda muddled and it ended up as just an assorted gumbo of random hip-hop catchphrases more than anything. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you liked because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell button afterwards because the bell is what actually alerts you to new episodes. And if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing, check out my link tree for Twitch streams, merch, movie and album review podcasts, and any other stuff I'm up to. So check all that fun stuff out now. Catch you next time. Peace.